Hey guys, this is Elise. I am a licensed professional counselor and a wellness coach. Welcome back to COVID-19 Mental Health Chats. The topic of this video is going to be where to start if you are co-parenting with some challenges during COVID-19. I decided to make this video because there is a common occurrence of parents who are not seeing eye to eye in these times about the severity of coronavirus or what to allow their children to do or not do in these times of having differences with their co-parent about how this pandemic is affecting each partner, etc. It is common to have differences of opinion on parenting decisions for all kinds of couples, even during times of peace, for married parents, unmarried parents, separated parents, divorced parents, but in times of great duress and added disagreement, like right now in the environment that we're in, it can feel particularly overwhelming. For the purposes of this video, the assumption of co-parenting is for parents who are no longer in a committed, monogamous relationship with one another. However, the principles can be used for parents who are still together or in other situations. So let's get started. Co-parenting is an experience that many families have. This video is designed generically for those who are self-quarantining and working from home, as well as those who are on the front lines as workers, volunteers, first responders, and healthcare workers. There are many nuances and particular details to every family which are so unique and cannot be exhaustively covered in one short video. So again, please take the generic structure of this video to adapt and apply it for your situation as it best benefits you and your family. Given the short bridge between feelings and actions, it is understandable that arguments may begin to consume much of parenting conversation during times of great duress such as now. The skill of listening is necessary for building healthy and longer bridges of community uh, and communication, sorry, especially during times of disagreement and to let down some of those defensive walls. This helps lessen and eliminate the need for many arguments. There are a few goals that parents may benefit from reviewing together to get on the same page before continuing the conversation. Generally, most parents can understand that children feel insecure unimportant, sometimes even unloved, when their parents are demonstrably in conflict with one another. Most parents can come to understand that children want to help their parents resolve their adult issues. And generally, most parents also agree that children do not have to hear and know all the information about adult matters, except when safety is of concern. Most parents also agree it is in the children's best interest to be positive and respectful to the other parent and should not have to, and for the child to not have to take sides and choose only one parent. Most parents understand these are extremely painful things for a child to witness and to experience and can in the long term become damaging experiences for their heart. So the goals that co-parents may want to review before returning to the decisions or perspectives that they must discuss is to get on the same page to agree on some core shared values. And the ones that I'm going to name and list are just generic based on what is commonly found, but they're not exhaustive. Again, and you might have some pieces that are also unique core values for what you want to raise your children upon. We want, oh, so, I'll get started with explaining what some of those examples might be. One might be, we want our children to feel secure, loved, and to know they are only responsible for child-sized issues and difficulties, not their parents' issues and difficulties. Another one might be, we want them to have a clear distinction, a separation between the parents' matters and the children's matters. And a third one, a third core value that may be shared is that we want them to have the best possible relationship with both their parents so that they're not stuck between a rock and a hard place whenever they're at home with their parents or either of their parents. From there, both co-parents may benefit from asking themselves if they are willing to accommodate the other co-parents' ideas, concerns, feelings about the topics on hand. 
it really truly takes both persons effort to create an atmosphere of mutual respect children are very smart they're so intuitive regardless of their developmental ability and they can pick up on a lot of information non-verbally because they have watched and seen the parents since they first laid eyes on them and for birth mother parents since the day they were a little person in your stomach so co-parents please do your best to either, if you're feeling yourself getting kind of riled up, be like, hey, we need to put a pause on this. Let, I know that it feels really urgent, but I'm not ready to talk about this. Let's connect back in the next 24 hours. Um, but right now I just need to take a breather. Or if you are able to calm yourself down, and I have a couple other videos on how to self-soothe, then please do your best to stay in that space so that you can, um, try to start creating that atmosphere of mutual respect first with each other to then provide a model for your children and an environment for your children that has respect. It is helpful to continuously keep these, the following four practical steps in the process of community, uh, communicating, I'm, tri I'm sorry, I'm tripping over my words, to create that calm and positive atmosphere. First, try to stay silent and listen without interrupting. Wait until there is a pause and ask if the other person has finished sharing. Then restate the co-parent's comments to ensure that you understood them correctly. Once it is clarified, then share what you have to say and the other co-parent provide the same reflective listening in return to listen without interrupting, to make sure and ask, hey, are you, are you done sharing your thought? And then restating, re-summarizing what you think that person said. This is helpful engagement to stay on the same page while discussing plans, structures, or boundaries for the little ones who you both love and care for the most. Please do acknowledge and share appreciation for anything and everything that is going well in your co-parenting. These verbal affirmations are like high fives and help the atmosphere of mutual respect. That said, there are going to be moments in co-parenting conversations when you do need to express disagreement. Disagreement is okay and healthy as well. A practical step you can take for productive and helpful conversation is to use descriptive statements instead of evaluative statements. Evaluative statements place yourself in a position of judging what the other has to say, as if you're giving red marks on their statements. This is bad, this is good, this is an A+, plus. this is a failure. Descriptive statements, on the other hand, illustrate and help the other person get insight to where you may be coming from. Instead of saying, for example, that's a bad idea, you can say, I think that Sarah should wake up with an alarm clock at the same time each day, even though we're doing homeschooling in these circumstances. It is good for her to have a rhythm that is predictable in her day-to-day -day life. When she is off rhythm, she gets irritable. Or another example is, instead of saying, you're so stupid, that's the dumbest thing I have ever heard. You can use a descriptive response to say, I don't let Anna watch that cartoon show because she repeats words that feel too adult, really inappropriate, and sometimes even vulgar. For instance, she used swear words one day when she was upset about putting on her pull-up. It was slightly funny, but mostly I felt really disturbed because that isn't the way that we've been trying to co-parent her so far to grow up. It can feel emotional to have co-parenting conversations, and that's okay. Give yourself some prep time before having the conversation. Review what you wanna say. You can make bullet points on a piece of paper or journal through your thoughts and remind yourself to stay open to how conversations naturally go with everyone else in your life. Naturally, conversations involve a bit of back and forth. And that's okay, it's very organic. Treat the co-parent as if you are in something like a business relationship 
without sharing intense emotions for or towards each other. The only thing that warrants any intense focus in a business relationship is the shared product or project or goal, and especially when things are not favorable for the shared project or product or goal. As co-parents, your shared interest is your child or children. Then, after you finish the conversation, leave a buffer of space to self-care a bit and personally review how the conversation went. You can use support people in your corner, in your core circle of your life and resources like a professional therapist or or coach to help manage your self-care. You can also use other supports in the community like your pastor, priest, chaplain, or, um, or a mentor that you may have, or like a mom group or a dad group. When necessary, if you both feel that you have come to an impasse, please seek out, depending on how severe it is, legal, professional uh, help, um, either legal or professional. Or if this is a resource that is part of your worldview, you can seek out pastoral care to push past the impasse and move forward positively. This is the one way that um, unlike a truly impartial business relationship, parents are never impartial to their children, again, generally speaking. You are absolutely, it would be natural and, and healthy and right that you are partial to your children, both of you. And it is okay if as co-parents, you might not fully be in a position to fully move forward through co-parenting conversations just yet. There might be some complicated history. There might be some recent events, something that is interrupting and acting as a blockade in this time. If you need the help, please do reach out. There is zero shame in it. And there are many people who are willing to work with you and help you through this. So those are some of the mindful and behavioral Uh, behaviors, verbal behaviors that co-parents can take to navigate difficult conversations in these times that pose extra stressors. Again, the basics of the framework are to take a step back from the heated conversation, to regroup on your shared goals, your shared values for co-parenting, and how you both want your children to feel in relation to their parents. Then, continuously aim to co-create an environment of mutual respect by fully listening, providing reflective feedback, and taking turns sharing in these ways before finding a conclusion. Use descriptive language instead of prescriptive, evaluative, or judgmental. Treat the conversation in somewhat of a business manner to dull down the intense emotions that can easily come up. And lastly, use support people and resources for your self-care. Parenting is hard work and co-parenting has its challenges, especially in times of great duress like now. So that's it for now. Comment, like, subscribe, connect with me here, and I'll aim to provide you more helpful information for your self-care in these times. Let's self-care and help other self-care to flatten the mental health wave from COVID-19. God bless.